When you look at what's priced in right now, right. is a second wave or a second lockdown priced in, or is it just concerns about what's going on around the world? Yeah, I think, um, look, let's, let's look at what happened. We've had a tremendous run-up in equity markets. I don't think it's any great surprise that you see markets taking a pause. There's, no really, there's not really any one single catalyst. I think there's a few things that have come together here. I think, first and foremost, there's been that question mark over whether, whether we're getting evidence of a pickup in cases in some states in the U.S. and what that might mean. But also, remember, we had the Fed earlier this week. And while the Fed came in overwhelmingly dovish in many regards, I think that their outlook is reflecting a market, a, an economy which is going to be in recession this year and only really beginning to come out uh, when we see the year-on-year -year data through next year. And so what that suggests is that you know the, the outlook that the Fed are taking, although it's dovish, it's against a weak economic backdrop. Um, I would argue here and now that what we're seeing is markets really just taking a bit of a pause after a very strong run. But technically within the markets, the level of participation, uh, the degree to which investors have been uh, still have a lot of cash on their balance sheets, etc., suggests to me that this is a pause rather than necessarily a, a full-on reversal of trend. So, so what are you expecting markets? I know it's very difficult to actually see some of uh, market movements. Well, this is our question actually on our Markets Live blog. Is this a route, a blip, or a sign of more to come? Are we going to see an extra uh, correction, John? Well, typically, I mean, a, a move of this magnitude in the S&P 500 is not that common. Um, and typically what you see when you get a sharp move, rather as we're seeing in the futures this morning, is that they will point to something of a rebound thereafter. Now, over the short run, has the market hit a point where maybe it's you know needs a little bit more of a catalyst? That's certainly arguable. Um, but in terms of the underlying fundamentals, let's look at the pros and the cons. On the pros column, what you have is massive financial stimulus, and the Fed added to that this week. There may be a bit of travel and arrive in what the Fed did here. They, we were waiting for them to deliver. They did deliver. Um, they've left themselves some optionality as well over yield curve control or possible twist operations in the future. But let's be clear, rates are going to be at zero in the U.S. for the next three years. And that means very, very supportive accommodative financial conditions. High frequency data are bottoming and are picking up, and we'd expect that to continue over the near term. And then, of course, what we're seeing also is evidence from places like China, from Asia, that there is pent-up demand. And as the economies begin to unlock, what we will see is something of a pickup in terms of consumer behavior. On the, on the negative column, of course, still concern over you know, devastating unemployment levels, which will take some time to come down. And, of course, that uncertainty over the second wave of the virus. And I think the markets are calibrating for that here and now. But I would argue right now, coming up to earnings season, and let's not forget, we've got a ton of catalysts coming up in July. We would expect to see some evidence of companies beginning to look forward and perhaps something you know, reflecting the bottoming in the higher frequency data, such as uh, purchasing manager indices, et cetera.